Right, today we are just going to quickly um, just get into variables and data types, and I'll do a practice uh, after this. All right, print hello world. We don't really need this. I do need import foundation uh, because I'm actually running on the online Swift playground. You can't see that because I'm not taking the screen. Anyway, let's find out what a variable is. So let's imagine we want to. On, let's say a specific phrase that we can always print okay so let's say that the phrase is hello yeah just hello all right and we'll say variable hl or we'll call it greet one equals hello so I'll very quickly explain what this is. So this here, uh, these three letters V A R, tell the machine that you want to create a variable. Okay. This name here, this greet one name, is the name of this variable, and the equals, the singular equals sign, signifies that this variable with the name greet one is now equal to this text here hello or whatever's on the right so the thing on the left is now equal to the thing on the right that's what this singular equal sign means right what is a variable so let's say that we want to use the word hello many times all right it might take us a while to print out i don't know hello type out hello over and over again maybe we just for whatever reason we don't want to for whatever reason we just want to attach hello to something, okay? Well, instead of printing out hello, I can store hello inside a variable. And the variable is called greet1, okay? So all I have to print out is greet1, which is actually the variable. And you see, hello actually comes out on the screen, okay? Now you're probably thinking, geez, well, why did you call the variable greet one? Uh, you know, it takes as much to type out the word greet one the, or the variable name uh, as it does to type out the word hello. Okay, genius. This is why we would use a variable of some form of text. So we'll call the variable text one. Okay. So once again, the VAR before the name of the variable. I declares that we want to create a variable with this name that stores this information, whatever it is. And now for text one, we are going to put, hello there, my friend. Oh, how I have missed you, right? Now, instead of having to type that out, over and over again, I can type out text one in the print statement or in whatever program I'm making, and that will give me the whole like series of text. So instead of having to type all this out now, all I type out is text one, and inside of this variable of name text one is this information, right? Why is this useful? Okay, it doesn't seem useful because maybe I'm only going to use this two or three times in a program, right? Let's imagine you're writing a book or you're programming a book for some crazy reason. And this, hello there, my friend. Oh, how I have missed you. This phrase is like a catchphrase and it's probably going to be generated or used 400, 500 times within the program, right? It's much easier to type out text one. 500 times than it is to type out the entirety of this okay now we're going to go into data types now that we sort of established an understanding of a variable and this data type is called a string right what a string is is essentially a series of text okay there are other data types Float and boolean. 
So let's say we want a number, for example. All right, we want the number. I don't know. We'll we'll say the first number and we'll call it seven. All right, and then we want a number. Call number two. We'll call it ten. Okay. If we want to times those numbers one by another, we can simply put num1 times num2 now that we've got them in variables. And you should see that this prints out 70, unless I've screwed up my multiplication there, right? This, this data type here is of type integer. Integers are whole numbers, okay? Now, a lot of the time, data types cannot interact with each other. So what I mean by this is, for example, if I add hello and hello there, my friend, I will get, well, I'll show you what I get, actually. So we'll print greet one plus text one, okay? And we will actually get hello, then Will, will be the first bit of text that's printed out. And then this here, hello there, my friend, oh, how I've missed you, will be added to the end of this string. And the end of this string is actually where the O ends. So it'll actually say, hello, hello, as one word, and then space there, my friend, and continue in that way. I'll prove it by printing it. See that? So essentially, when you add two strings together, um, it's rather than having addition, it'd be like putting a word on another word or putting a series of words on another words. For example, combining one sentence with another. That's essentially what an addition of a string is. OK, and you've already seen when you multiply or use numbers together, they give what you would expect. OK. What happens when you put a number into a string and then you add it to another number in a string. Now, in the real world, if you add 10 and 92, you'll get 102. But let's see what happens in the code world. You get 1092. And the reason is because these two uh, numbers here, 10 and 92, are strings. They're not actually numbers at this moment in time, OK? How has that happened? Don't even know. That's how it's happened. Yeah, they're not even numbers at this uh, moment in time, right? They're actually strings. So it, the, here, you're doing what you do when you put a word onto another word. We're putting the, the 92 onto the 10 instead of adding the two together, right? And what has happened is rather than get the addition we want, we've basically put two words together because the machine interprets these as words because they're in double quotation marks. Notice how these two here are inside of double quotation marks. That is a string, essentially, right? In the double quotation. I think single quotation marks for Swift as well. But basically, if you add a string and a string, and the two strings are both numbers, you won't get the number that you're after. You'll just get the two uh, numbers put together as one bigger number rather than you know added or multiplied or whatever uh, because it's like putting a word onto another word yeah because they're in string format let's try to print num1 which is seven uh, plus text one what do you think is going to happen there let's print that out and find out you get an error cannot be applied to operands of type int and string. So what's happened there is we're trying to add a number uh, to a word, okay? What's hello plus seven? There isn't a hello plus seven because maths isn't applied to um, sentences, for example, right? Just as in pro the programming world, <laughs> maths isn't applied to sentences um, because that doesn't make any sense. So when you try to add a integer to a string, you get an error because words are not compatible with numbers. Uh, humans can interpret words as compatible with numbers, but the machine cannot. So it spits out an error. I'm just going to put these here to hide this. 
this is a single line comment. I'll get into that later. Basically, this line won't run. So you can see that sometimes certain data types, i.e. a string uh, and a integer added together, uh, will result in things that you might not expect, you know, results that you might not expect, right? Let's see what other data types they are, and we'll put them in variables. So var, which declares my variable, uh, we'll call it true one, and we'll say it's true, okay? And we'll say var false one equals false. I think this is how we do these type of variables. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, these these variables here are actually true or false values. You see how they don't have um, double quotation marks on them. I'm actually gonna. I'm, I'm actually curious. So I'm gonna check if I can use single quotation marks. Text two equals a test. No, you can't. It has to be double quotes. There we go. So yeah, these are actually values of true and false. Okay. So let's say, well, let's say we want to ask a computer a question. We want to say, I don't know, is the capital of Australia Adelaide, for example, right? The, the, the capital of Australia is not Adelaide. So we could say that if the value of uh, the answer to that question is not equal to whatever the capital of Australia, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't even want to think about it. We can give a false answer, right? If I print these variables, you'll see that the variables of true or false. We'll get into what true or false are later on. It's not so much important in the sense that um, right now it, it, it matters to know what they do. It's more important right now to just understand that they exist, okay? And then we'll get into another variable. So we'll call this uh, decimal one, right? And this is called a floating point variable. So let's say we've got, instead of nine, which is a whole number, we want 9.24, right? Although it doesn't look like it, this data type is different to this data type. I think they are compatible. I'm not sure because I don't do a lot with Swift anymore. Um, they are different data types. Just be aware of that. 42.5, we'll say. And we'll print those out. There we are. There's the two decimals. So, I'm sorry that was um, quite rushed, but just to go over and reiterate everything that's been taught here. And don't worry, there's a practice lesson after this. You make a variable by using the word or VAR, these three letters together, followed by the name of the variable, uh, followed by one equal sign, and the value of the variable, right? What a variable is, is a name that stores a value, essentially. That's that's it. So this name, greet one, stores a value, hello. This name, text one, stores this value. And number one, this variable called number one, holds the value seven, right? That's it, okay? Now, there are also four crucial to know or to remember data types. There, there's probably other data types that I'm missing, but these are going to be the main ones that you play around with. So there's a data type known as string. So any any you know large uh, bundles of text, you'd call them strings. I think there's also character, which is just one character, but we won't get into that now. For now, just know that there are strings and they hold text. And to start a string you use a double quote and to end a string, you use a double quote as well, okay? If you'll notice here, there's actually a space bar. A space uh, a space character is a valid character in a string. And if you put a space 
here before the end of that, that will be added to your string. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. We've also got integers, which are whole numbers. So there's that value of an integer. There's a Boolean, uh, or a bool, as th I think it's known as in uh, Swift. And these are of values true or false, okay? And there are also floating point numbers, um, which instead of being whole numbers, have decimal points, okay? Those are the four main data types, right? Now, I'm just gonna get into, uh, you know, why it's important to remember those data types once again. And that is because they aren't always compatible with each other. So for example, you can add 10 and 42.5, I think, and the result will be 52.5. And what you'll receive back uh, will be a number of type float. It'll be a date, data type of float. If I try and add a number to a text string, for example, I'll get an error because words are not compatible with numbers. We can use in English or whatever language you can use words uh, to describe numbers and to describe mathematical calculations. But in a computer, you cannot add numbers to words. OK. On the other hand, if you put a number inside a string or you make a string that represents a number and you add it to another string that represents a number, the result will actually just be a string that instead of being a, the addition of these two, uh, you'll just get the characters plus the other characters uh, combined rather than an actual algorithmic uh, addition. OK, I'm not sure about true or false. I think actually true and false might be applicable to numbers because they might have values of one and zero. I'm not entirely sure, um, but, you know, they they have other purposes. So. It's important to remember that they're different data types for that reason. Okay. Another thing before we move on, now I've given you a little bit of a understanding and explication, an explanation of data types, is that you can actually make variables based on other variables. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take the example of variable number one and number two. Okay. Let's make a variable and we'll call it number three. Okay. And we'll say variable number three is equal to, actually, you know what? We'll say it's equal to number two times by decimal one. Okay, so that's 10 times 9.24, which should be, hopefully, 92.4, right? We'll print it afterwards. And this will also, if this doesn't work, by the way, uh, this will confirm that you can't use float, but you can uh, use float with integer, okay? So here we are. Oh no, you can't, you can't. Overloads for, oh damn. I think I actually have to do that the other way around. No, well, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Number two. No, you cannot use it because they're two different types. So you can't even use a double with an integer without converting. So back to the old drawing board. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna just do that. Sorry, I know it seems unprofessional to do that, but um, it's just essentially because I don't use this language very much. And in some languages you can do this, and some you can't. So anyway, let's make a new variable. No more kidding around out of two other variables, right? And we'll print it out. So we're gonna use variable number one times number two, should be 70. So variable number three should hold the value of 70, right? And you can see there we have the value of 70. So that's worked. And we can also make variables based on, I don't know, text one plus greet one, okay? So we'll say variable greet, two equals text one plus greet one. I have no idea what this is going to produce because um, I can't actually see my variables right now. I don't care. It's just to show that hello and the other thing can be added together. 
You see that? So they've been added together, these two variables in a new one, right? Probably a lot to take in. Um, sorry if I was a bit slow because I was experimenting. Um, I don't use Swift a lot. Um, but you should take this as an opportunity to experiment and understand that, look, that didn't work out how I thought it would. That whole decimal number times uh, integer, sorry, float type, float by an integer didn't work, right? But if I'd have never tried that, I'd have never found out. And there's one thing that often happens uh, when you program and you think, this isn't going to work, so why bother? All you got to do to find out whether it works is click this run button. And if it doesn't work, you'll have an error here. Anyway, that's everything. Thank you for watching. There will be a practice video uh, accompanying this.